What you are watching is some deep out of bounds memory manipulation in Ayers Rock, which has become incredibly powerful and has completely broken this game wide open. To illustrate the power of this glitch, or this technique rather, this is Prox. This is not part of the glitch. Sanctum warping into Prox's was set up earlier. Notice how there is nothing here. We don't have the end game flag set or anything like that. But if we move carefully and get ourselves onto the correct tile out of bounds, by stepping on this particular tile, we will write the value into memory that signals to the game that the game should be over. And on Sanctum warping into Prox, what we will see is that the game, well, we can just go straight to the credits. Clearly, this is a very powerful technique. This technique will allow us to write a whole lot of interesting stuff into memory. Could potentially get to arbitrary code execution, but we're not quite there yet. But let's walk through how we've stumbled on this amazing new technique that's allowed the Lost Age to come down to basically 90 minutes from start to end. Let me tell you a little bit of a story. So T Water, one of the most acclaimed members of the Golden Sun hacking community, huge contributor, um, done so many good things for us. Um, he found um, uh, shortly after Treachery was broken, he realized that there was some behavior similar to that happening in Ayers Rock that we ought to know about. Now, the point of uh, the Treachery was that you step on the leaves that write some values into memory and we go about our day. Now, obviously the Lost Age doesn't have those, but it does have these floating tiles. Notice that when I jump onto these floating tiles, that feel like that these tiles actually stop moving. Again, it stops moving. Again, it stops moving. And sometimes you can even get them to freeze. See how these ones are frozen? By stepping on two of them simultaneously, you can actually write the values into memory to keep them permanently frozen. So, this is kind of interesting. Now the problem, the, the only difficulty is that there's only a handful of, of tiles that will do this. It's basically 52, 53, 51, and 50. And not every room in Ayers Rock has these things. And well, uh, we're also limited in the memory addresses that we can reach. Because while we can get out of bounds in this room using the retreat glitch, I'm just going to use debug to get out of bounds. Um, there's actually not that many places where there are 50 tiles, as you can kind of see, out of bounds. There's, there's really nothing going on here um, and that's a huge problem um, that greatly limits the places where we can write things into memory and uh, the dream was dead and that 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 was it so it wouldn't be a very good video if that's where the story ended and fortunately for us that's not uh, tea water had another really good idea that he brought to the community a little while ago and that's led to kind of this blowing up to be that that amazing thing that we've just seen it actually involves Cyclone, of all things. Now, Cyclone has two things. The first thing it does is that when you use Cyclone, it kind of sucks you into the ground and then it triggers a loading zone. The other kind of Cyclone usage is this one, which when you cast Cyclone on it, it actually just takes your Z coordinates straight up until you hit the next loading zone. And same thing, this one will take us back down. This seemingly harmless behavior is actually allowing us to do some really crazy stuff out of bounds. The thing is about Cyclone, and Sand, and Hover, and a bunch of other things, is that the way the game determines whether or not the interaction on that tile will be valid is by using a, a check on what's called the third layer. So right now I'm displaying the collision associated with the normal layer that you can interact with. I believe this is layer two. You run into walls, you do stuff, this will make sense. There's like a little 1E thing here, whatever. There's a B here that indicates the door. So on, who cares? But there is another layer that we can interface with, and that's the one that determines where the cyclone works, and that's the third layer. If I switch over to the third layer, you'll notice that there's this EB indicated here. And it turns out that all of these layer 3 interactions exist on every map in Golden Sun The Lost Age. 
it doesn't matter whether you're in Shrine of the Sea God, Mars Lighthouse, the EB interaction whenever you use Cyclone on it will actually do exactly this. It will take you up, you know, change your Z coordinate to be um, a little bit higher. It's this fact that allows us to do some crazy stuff. So let's see what exactly I mean by this. So now we're in Airs Rock again. I'm going to switch from displaying the normal collision to the layer 3. Now this is layer 3 and if I go down a little bit there's an EB tile. If I cast Cyclone on the EB tile you can see things are changing. In fact you saw a little bit of Felix's head, Felix zooms up. My Z coordinate is now 10. What's happened is my Z coordinate's been raised. Now what that has done is it's actually changed where the interaction with tiles gets written to. So it's changed the, the address that I'm referencing, which is the, the stuff over here. And that suddenly, if we do this enough times, is going to put us into memory ranges that actually become useful. In fact, if we do this 31 times, this actually puts us into a state where we're writing values into memory in a really interesting way. What you're about to see is going to illustrate what exactly is going on. So, in a very, very crude way, whenever you step onto these 50 tiles, or 51, 52, or whatever they are out of bounds, it actually physically writes in that value into memory and makes it appear on screen. This guy here, I've made it appear on screen. Walk off the tile, it goes away. Walk on the tile, it goes, it comes into existence. And it's the writing of that value into memory that allows all of this stuff to really happen. Let's understand the geography of, of the Lost Age maps a little bit. Um, so what I've got here is a picture of map 83, which is a potential candidate for this trick. And in fact, it's the, where, where I'm going to do the trick. Uh, it's the room where you'd normally do the retreat glitch onto the pillar to skip a room in, um, in, in No Save and Quit. Let's understand what I'm showing you right now. This is a dump of memory into an Excel spreadsheet. And I've color-coded it to anything that's red is a door, anything that's black is an impassable wall. There's a bunch of other impassable things given uh, different height differentials that make it impossible to pass. Um, and anything green is a 50 tile, but you probably can't make those out from this, this, this high view. Broadly speaking, this stuff here is your inbounds area. This stuff up here is your underflow Y area. Down here is some fun mystery data, which we'll talk a little bit about in a moment. Most of the time when we're doing out of bounds tricks in the Lost Age, we're leveraging this area of memory, or maybe over here, this stuff to the left of this gray line is underflow X. Normally we're trying to hit a door in this region. We'll do some maneuvering out of bounds and ta-da, we hit a door. But if I zoom in here, you'll actually notice that the geography of Air's Rock is particularly difficult to navigate. I've got all of this collision and these doors out of bounds which make it incredibly hard to navigate and in particular incredibly hard to get to the door that we want. Um, the only 50 tile that is even remotely accessible is this guy down here, which is fine but it doesn't write to anything useful. So we've got this challenge with Airs Rock in that the, this underflow Y area, this stuff up the top, the place where we'd normally go to do interesting things out of bounds, we can't use that. All of this stuff up here is too difficult to navigate. That means we have to look elsewhere. Now what we can look at is like a deep low values or I guess high values of Y, it doesn't really make sense, the, it's kind of inverted. But it's basically targeting this area of memory. What is this area of memory? Part of this is kind of like sprite map data right here. But this stuff, this stuff in here, believe it or not, is slot to enemy data. The funny thing, if you know no save and quit, you'll know why this is funny. It's funny because this is the same data that gives us grief with random height maps out of bounds. Random values in here can annoy the, uh, us doing out of bounds tricks in, in other categories. So once again, we're in slot to kind of in enemy data range, which is kind of funny. I'm going to bring up an example of the gnome actually. We're going to look at the same values in memory, or more or less the same values in memory. I have zoomed out way too much. That'll do. And now we've written extra stuff here. So this stuff in here is written because of the gnome. And if you compare it with this one, you can kind of see how this band's a lot thicker now. So we can write 
kind of uh, we can find an enemy put that enemy in slot two or, or do do some manipulation to get an enemy in slot two and kind of get a whole host of candidates down here that we can potentially access in particular we can almost get a 50 tile wherever we want to so if we can figure out i'm going to zoom in quite a lot now this is a particular in, uh, example for a gnome um, in particular if we can find well the gnome writes a 50 tile into this location which just happens to align with an interesting flag that we actually care about now we could do this with other enemies to find different other combinations to hit other flags but i'll just point this one out as something that's useful the way in which we can calculate uh, which flags or which memory values do we want to target we can basically uh, manually figure out what flags are useful for us and then we can plug them into this calculator that we've written and then we can kind of see if uh, the right things end up aligning in this case we can see that if we can uh, use um, cyclone we use cyclone and get to height to 332 which is roughly 31 times then we're going to be writing values into this location this location is the prox flag and so if we can put a 50 tile there by getting an enemy in that location uh, in this location which is given by uh, one of these here <laughs> then it's all going to be okay so tldr we can use encounters to write kind of arbitrary 50 uh, tiles into memory into the right places so that then we can step on them to write values to memory that can then set a flag or something. So given that we can use enemy data in slot 2 to write near arbitrary 50, 51, 52, 53 tiles into the outer bounds, the only limitation that remains is what values in memory can you write? Well, I've got the editor, or well, the hex editor from VBA up here to kind of illustrate uh, what, what, what is, is writable. You can write to zero, uh, this first column here, this column here, which is the four offset. You can write to this column here, which is the eight offset, or you can write to this column here, which is the C offset. Um, if you happen to want to write to anything in this range, the two, six, A or E range, you're kind of sweet out of luck and, and we can't do it. It gets a little bit more annoying than that as well. Um, the values that we write are actually 11-bit writes and not 16-bit writes. A 16-bit write would write up to this value in this area, uh, in, into the address, for instance. But a, a six, uh, an 11-bit write will only write up to this value, leaving the remaining flags over here changed, or the remaining bits over here unchanged. Now that may not seem like a big deal, uh, but it kind of is. It is a little bit of a limitation of what we can and can't do. You're currently seeing on screen the different maps and tiles and writes that you can do uh, in Ayers Rock. So map 85 is like the main chamber of Ayers Rock. It's that huge room with all the doors and the multi-levels and all that stuff. Map 86 is the one where you first enter Ayers Rock from the, the northern entrance. You use the lightning and you walk through the door. And map 87 is actually the room where you, we usually use the retreat glitch and get out of bounds and no save and quit. These values are the only values that we're able to write. So you can kind of see that 85's got quite a lot of options, different tile types and different writes that you can do. Map uh, 86 is a little bit more restricted and 87's the most limited of all. It turns out that uh, even though these values are quite restrictive in the values that they can write to memory, they can do just enough for us to um, kind of break the game. This is the flag list of interesting flags, basically. The, these are the ones that we've identified as ones that could out, help us really speed up beating the game. And you'll notice that uh, a lot of these don't actually align with the memory addresses that we were talking about earlier. Remember, it needed to be a 0, a, a 4, an 8, or a C. There's not a lot of those here. Conveniently, though, there's just enough here for us to really break the game. So there's some conveniences in like um, Tendaria Tower and the Grind uh, Pillar that you can get rid of by writing values out of bounds. But the real power here is the Prox Flag, which basically just allows us to end the game and entirely skip the Mars Lighthouse. And the No Encounters Flag, which is a debug utility. And the combination of these things, plus Death Storage, actually allows us to beat the game basically as soon as we get to Ayers Rock. So let's summarize. 
We know that an Ayers Rock standing on one of these floating tiles will write a value into memory. By leveraging the fact that Cyclone tiles exist on every map, we can adjust our Z coordinates sufficiently high that we are writing tile values into incorrect locations and in almost an arbitrary way. We can write any value that these tiles generate into almost any place in memory subject to a, some, some minor constraints and we can leverage this tech to go very very fast and uh, skip a lot of this game. We don't quite have arbitrary code execution but it's certainly plausible that it's around the corner. What's next for the Lost Stage then? Who knows? We could have arbitrary code in two weeks time. We could find some more interesting flags that we can write to to do interesting things. I don't really know. What I do know is the Lost Age can be completed in under an hour and a half. And that's kind of crazy.